Today I'm going to be working on this issue right here where the LEDs flash with uh, under some conditions of the uh, settings of this dimmer switch here. The dimmer switch is an old one and I don't believe it's compatible with LEDs. So I, I bought a new one and I'm going to replace it now and I'll walk you through the steps of doing that. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, turn the lights all the way up and we've got somebody in the other room there that's going to be flipping breakers and we'll see which breaker turns the lights off. Okay, go ahead. Yes, that's it. Just leave that one off. So we've killed the power and uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove this old dimmer. This old one just pulls straight off and, uh, and we just take remove this cover here. Pretty nice cover. This looks like it's solid brass. It's probably been in here since the 60s. Now we'll remove the, uh, the dimmer module here. This is the old style that clicks and rotates. So luckily my circuit breakers were labeled, so I had a pretty good idea of which um, breaker controlled the lights in this room and it's a good idea if you ever bored someday and you've got somebody to help you you could go around and label your um your, your breakers if they're not labeled and I, I also sometimes when i'm installing something i'll write the breaker number right on the uh, the device so you see inside that was barely in there it's just got a the black wire uh flew off when I tried to disturb it here, but I'll reach in here and uh, pull it out. There it is. So in this case, these two wires act as uh, just a switch. When you short that out, it would turn the lights on. So I'm just going to replace that with uh, with this new device here. I've got another one to do in the house also where um, where it, it's functioning backwards and the when you flip it uh, up it's off and down is on but I believe the way uh, they want it is up is on and down is off so this one has a uh, connection for the ground which I believe there is one lurking around in there. It's not very much. I'm going to have to get another piece of ground wire and connect it from here to there. And, uh, so I'm going to go get some extra wire. I'll be right back. I'll pause this. Okay, I went and got some wire. Normally you would use bare copper wire, but I don't happen to have any, so I'm, I did find some insulated solid green copper wire and that'll be fine i'll just strip some back here this is an older uh, it's going into a metal box here and they've got the the ground wire attached to a screw so i'm going to attach it like they did they've just got the wire wrapped around the screw A few times might have to back the screw out a little bit I 
finally got it under the screw. So I'll form a loop. And you want to form a loop uh, with the end of the wire wrapping around the clockwise direction. So when you tighten it, it's actually pulling the wire into the screw. If you wrap it the opposite direction, it'll actually just unwind the wire sometimes. So there we go, I've got, the, got that tightened in there. So now I've got a ground coming out. And I'll just strip a little bit. Back a little bit. And uh, right here's where you install the ground wire. So I'm gonna form a, a loop there. Tighten this one down. These screws look like they're designed to accept a Phillips or a flat blade, which is convenient. You don't have to change your blade. They've got the ground connected. And this one has a, uh, a clamp for the wire, so you just Slide that in behind the clamp on the black wire there and tighten that down. And if I was controlling another uh, the light from another location, I would use this. This is for what they call a two-way switch. But since I'm only controlling it from this one location, we just use this, uh, the terminal that's not taped over. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna leave it just like that and test it. I wanna make sure I get it in uh, the correct orientation. It says top there. So I may want to, I followed the directions the last time and the switch was working oppositely. So this time I'm gonna check it before I wire it. I may want to head and, I may go ahead and switch it, the white wire up to this terminal. I'll see how that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the breaker on be right back. So I've got the breaker turned back on now, so you have to be careful when you're touching this, but I want to confirm that when you flip the switch up, the lights are on, and yeah, that's working. And down is off, and the dimmer is functioning. Okay, so now I'm gonna go kill the breaker one more time, and then install that into the box. Okay, so I left the switch in the up position and I went and flipped the breaker again and came back and confirmed the lights are off. So now I'm gonna fold these wires back into the box. And it's all the screws.
confirming that it will go in with no pressure. You can push it in and it goes, so that's good. got it installed there. Now I can uh, go turn the power back on. I'm going to leave the switch in the up position. Okay, now I've confirmed the switch is working like, like it should. And I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the plate. Luckily for me, I can still use the same plate. which uh, is nice because it's, this is a pretty nice solid brass plate. So um, the dimmer came with a uh, pretty detailed uh, set of instructions with diagrams of how to use it in I recommend that you um, read those over carefully and fully understand what it what they're saying before you attempt this yourself. If you um, have never tried this before, um, this one has some programming features, but I didn't really need to address them because it works uh, perfectly well. But there are some adjustments you can make if you want to set the limits of the on the low side. And there's also a switch to determine whether you're using uh, LEDs and condescents or CEL lighting. But in my case, it was set from the factory properly. So I really didn't need to deal with any of that. <laughs> 